the N64 is often hailed by many to be the architect of childhood, a certified PH fat grey box of joy that brought thousands of gamers up in a world of absentee parents. And for that we love it, even if the controller was incredibly weird. Endless nights of local multiplayer on the likes of Smash Bros and Mario Kart sold the N64 as one of the best ways to spend your weekends. And for you today we've collected a series of moments, a reminisce package if you will, of what it was to be an N64 owner. With this in mind, I'm Jules the Southwest Savage for WhatCulture.com here with a list of 10 awesome moments that define the N64. Number 10. Discovering the Great Deku Tree Ocarina of Time is arguably one of the greatest entries in the series, and it's an undeniable classic in its own right. It was the first attempt at a 3D Zelda game, and despite a handful of niggling drawbacks, was a tremendous success. Discovering the Great Deku Tree in the forest happens quite early on and is such an impressive sight to behold. A ginormous talking tree infected with a great evil, and in need of assistance. Acting as the first dungeon, it became the defining entry point to the series, showing off what the new hardware could do and tangling players up with its fantastical web of fun like a giant sculpture. Number 9. Taking advantage of Odd Job. GoldenEye 64, aka the Man Maker. You weren't a true gamer unless you'd earned your chops on this excellent FPS shooter. While it's not aged as well as people would like to believe, at the time it was the way to avoid going outside. But no matter whose house it was and whose copy of the game was in the console, there was only one rule. No odd job. We all did it though, playing as the shortest character in the game, meaning that bullets would just sail over your head while you maniacally mowed down your so-called friends. Number 8. Taking down an at, at The opening sequence of this otherwise generic corridor shooter overshadowed everything else in the game, arresting critical attention almost completely. For the first time, players were able to pilot themselves around an open environment, dogfighting with enemy pilots, incapacitating all-terrain armoured transports, and generally having the time of their lives. In fact, this one segment was probably replayed countless times as you showed friends again and again how fun this section could be. Some may argue that it's been eclipsed by the Rogue Squadron series, but nothing can replace the original sensation of flying around like Luke Skywalker himself. Number 7. Bowser's Castle in Mario Kart 64 Bowser's Castle is one of the many standout stages from Mario Kart 64, but ranks among one of the best in the series. Visually, it's the most interesting, and the music is beyond phenomenal. It's also designed perfectly, being challenging without resorting to underhanded hazard placements or irregular corner turns. The thwomps though frequent are easily avoided, designed to keep the player focused on their speed as they travel through this section rather than interrupting the pacing of the race and infuriating the racers. In short, it's the complete package and would always be the go-to stage to settle arguments between my friends and I. Number 6. Sneak and Snore I know it seems weird to pick just one minigame from Mario Party 2, but this one just delivers all the goods in this friendship ruiner of a title. The objective was to sneak across the screen, press a button and retreat to safety without getting caught by the sleeping chain chomp. Simple enough, but the slumbering time would occasionally awaken, and if it saw movement, would pounce on unsuspecting players. By the end, desperation would set in, forcing players to sprint for the exit before their opponents can make their escape, which exacerbates the situation even more. It's just a perfect blend of minigame, tense, easy to play, and would leave you screaming at the TV. Number 5. Making Pikachu Ride the Wave So imagine if you will that you're standing on a school playground. It's an overcast day because come on it's England, and your knees are scraped from a rousing game of Jimmy Spriggs Pick Up Twigs or Fluffy Ruffs Catch em Cake and you overhear the sentence, I made my Pikachu surf on Pokemon Stadium. Bullshit, you think. But indeed it was true. In order to complete such a tremendous feat, players had to finish the entire R2 Prime Cup Master Ball Division using any combination of five Pokemon and a Pikachu caught from either Pokemon Red, Blue or Yellow. Once done, a message would appear reading, you won using Pikachu, at which point players would be prompted to replace any move in their arsenal with Surf. When performing the move specifically in Pokemon Stadium, Pikachu jumps on board his tiny surfboard and rides the wave straight into his opponent's face. It's pretty great, honestly. Number 4. Doing a Barrel Roll Impressive visuals, smooth animations, open-ended pathways, expressive voice acting, and an awesome soundtrack. You know I'm talking about Star Fox 64. And at the centre of it all, the R-Wing, aka the pimpest ride in the galaxy, which is capable of numerous stunts, including the now infamous Barrel Roll, a special manoeuvre in which the entire ship is spun horizontally to avoid enemy lasers. Not only is this move incredibly effective, it's also downright iconic, cementing the phrase do a barrel roll as being perhaps the most single recognisable gaming meme of all time. Number 3. That Creepy Piano Released in 1996, Super Mario 64 was a tremendously innovative platformer, perfectly integrating gameplay into a 3D environment, pioneering three-dimensional platforming and still holding up today. Well, besides a few camera issues. But we can't talk about Mario 64 without mentioning the demonic piano in Big Boo's Haunt, which is completely terrifying. After all, it comes out of nowhere. The piano, a demonic, possibly haunted instrument of destruction, appears completely harmless when you enter the room, only for it to spring to life once approached, attacking the player relentlessly. It's probably one of the first jump scares for young
younger players, and I know I definitely didn't expect it to happen in a Mario game. Number two, beating up Team Yoshi. Now, I've got no beef with Yoshi. He's all right in my books, but if you said, hey, Jules, do you fancy beating 18 of these little dino dummies into submission? My answer would be Falcon Punch! The second stage of the single player offering dropped you in with a gaggle of Yoshis and tasked you with knocking the eggs out of them. It's a fairly simple setting, but it was just such a blast that players went back to this event time and time again. There's very little else to say other than this was a great way to get players addicted to the fast, crazy, and tightly controlled Smash experience. And number one, getting a copy of Superman 64. <sighs> Apologies for bringing up what many consider to be the kryptonite of gaming itself, but we have to face facts. If you were an N64 owner, there's a good chance at some point you owned this game, be it through a relative-related Christmas present or out of sheer willingness to kill your soul. Either way, this game, despite handling about as well as a skip on ice, was still the third best-selling game of the N64 for its year of release. It utterly boggles the mind how such a game got into the hands of so many. But now in retrospect, we have to laugh at the situation we all faced at one time in our lives, as this really is the defining moment of being an N64 owner. So why not embrace it? And that's our list. Got any more awesome N64 moments worth bringing over to our house for gaming nights? Well, let us know about them in the comments section below. And if you want to see the human embodiment of Superman 64, then come chat to me on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero. If you enjoyed the video, then like, share, and subscribe for more. As always, I've been Jules for WhatCulture.com, and I'll speak to you soon.